when we're looking for life, part of the challenge is we don't actually know how life begins in the first place. And so a lot of the work that we do in this lab is trying to understand how life gets started on Earth, but also if any of that could apply to life getting started elsewhere, like on Mars or on Jupiter's moon Europa or Saturn's moon Enceladus. We don't really know all the details that get us to the point where we can call something alive, but we do know a lot of the smaller steps that, that lead us there. So for example, minerals or rocks that would have been present on early Earth, along with oceans and atmosphere, and those chemicals, along with those geological components, can react together to do some reactions that are life-like, but are not exactly alive. But those are a process that could take us on the way to understanding how life begins. So what we're looking at for Earth is how the geological setting drove these organic reactions into a more complex system that would then become something that looks more like life that we're familiar with. Uh, in order to simulate other environments, we need to know what parameters we're going to explore. So for example, on the early Earth, we know that there was no oxygen, and that's why we have two nitrogen-filled glove boxes in our lab. Obviously, if we took oxygen out of the room, it'd be a bad time for all the researchers involved. But in these very controlled, box environments. We can have an atmosphere that we have pre-selected and then within our mixtures, depending on what environment we want to replicate, we can then tailor the pH, temperature, mineral, make and composition and oxidation state in order to test very specific environments. One thing that's really exciting that we do in our group is we simulate hydrothermal vents in the lab. And so hydrothermal vents are where hydrothermal fluid comes up through the sea floor and produces these things called chimneys and plumes where it's a very reactive environment where life can live. But they're very hard to access on the earth. They're very deep. And also you cannot access ones that have non-earth-like conditions. We simulate hydrothermal vents in the lab by injecting a hydrothermal fluid into an ocean and we control the atmosphere, the ocean, and the composition of these fluids so we can grow our own chimneys and we can generate our own minerals, thus giving us an analog, a physical analog sample of what we would have had on, say, the early Earth, early Mars, or even the ocean worlds. In this system, we have uh, this vessel that is going to contain our ocean and this is the hydrothermal fluid that we use to simulate chimney growth. So this represents an ocean with no oxygen. And then the injection that comes from here is going to be the hydrothermal fluid that would come through the seafloor and precipitate a chimney. So the chimney is the wispy bits that are coming out the top of that, of that interface there and it's, it's slightly greenish white, which is representative of the iron, which is a green mineral, and the magnesium, which is a white mineral. And so they're all together in the same chimney here. We also added different types of simple organics into the hydrothermal fluid itself. And via injection, via syringe pump, we are able to deduce how much of the organics interact with water rock interface. And basically that can tell us a lot of information of how these organics were involved in um, very important origin of life reactions. And so we're able to uh, study how these organics adhere to the chimney or also end up in the seawater itself. It's really important to do this kind of lab work because when we look for life on other worlds, we're looking for chemical signatures. But when you see something with a mission, how do you know if it came from life or not? And so by understanding all the complex chemistry that can occur without life, like in a lab setting, we can then deconvolute that and try to guess whether that signature has come from life. As missions are exploring these other planets, learning about those environments and the processes that go on there, lab work allows us to simulate and control those environments and then test specific reactions. So that in a geological setting, like on Europa, you might find many different things affecting a reaction at once and it could be hard to tell what's going on. But in the lab, you can control one by one the things that you add to an experiment and then try to figure out how that's happening and why that's happening. And then by comparing to the mission data, you can get a better understanding of what we're observing on these other worlds. For ocean world work, uh, you know, it's, it's very helpful to have constraints based on previous mission data. But if there's a parameter that's unconstrained, say like pH, we can then in lab test our reaction under a variety of pHs. And then when we go and get more data, we can then go back to our research, evaluate what, you know, what is most relevant to those conditions, either run more experiments or you know, kind of pull those results and, and go further. So it can actually be iterative as well because 
In lab, you get to control the settings so you can see what might occur on a planet. And then on a mission, you see a signature on a planet, but you don't necessarily know where it came from. And so lab work can help interpret the mission signal, but then the mission can find things that we didn't expect and then tell us what we should be simulating in the lab. So it does, it's, a, it's an interplay, it goes back and forth. And it's very exciting to have these missions out there sending back new data that can inform the experiments that we do next. Some of the interesting new things we've, we're finding with this work is that, for example, the elements in the geological environment that undergo redox reactions like iron or sulfur, these actually have a huge impact on the organic chemistry that's going on in these systems. So that means that when you have a hydrothermal setting with iron minerals or with iron sulfides, for example, that's going to be a crucial factor in how the origin of life reaction would proceed in that environment. And we've seen uh, reactivity under a variety of systems under ocean world relevant conditions, including the synthesis of amino acids or proto-metabolic reactions that are relevant to how metabolism works in modern day, but that can be taken out of the body and, and work within a test tube. By understanding more about these reactions, then we can narrow down which environments can drive them, and thus which planets this might have occurred on, and where to explore next. <laughs>